Thank you. All right. Yeah, lightning talks after lunch. Since uh, everyone's falling asleep, we're going to go fast and keep you awake. Um, I'm Jocelyn Mozak, as she said. Um, I have a WordPress agency here in Portland, Oregon. I've been working with WordPress for about 10, 11 years now. And I also coach other WordPress professionals, business owners, and agency owners. And today I want to talk to you about is cloning yourself using automation. Um, I'm not a biologist. I don't know AI, so I can't actually replicate you. But I know for me, having another me running around is probably not good either. But what I want to talk about is how to use automation in your business to effectively clone yourself, to take those tasks that are repetitive and find ways to have someone else or something else Else do it so it frees you up to do what's important in your business and where your time is best spent. So what I'm going to touch on today, and I'm just going to drop into a few points within a project life cycle. So I'm going to look at how we use automation for a standard WordPress development uh, project within my business. So typically, projects start like this. You get an email from a prospect and they ask the exciting question of, so how much does a website cost? To which we all go, well, it depends. And our goal in this is with using automation is to go from that email of how much does it cost to the sales call where we actually, if this is someone we want, will potentially write that um, estimate and get them onboarded as a client. So with the email of how much does it cost, we're going to reply with an email. And it's going to go something like this. Thank you for reaching out. To provide an accurate estimate, I'm going to need a little more information. Here is a link to my project request form. So you're already hearing a little bit of automation. Instead of my putting questions into this, I am sending them to a form that is going to ask them specific questions I need to really figure out if this is a client I, or a prospect I even want to have a sales call with. Continues on. Once complete, you're going to be taken to my scheduling page. Ah, a little more automation here, where you can select a time from my calendar that works with your schedule. I look forward to learning more about your project. So again, we're hearing a little bit more automation in there. There's a scheduling calendar, or instead of back and forth emails, they're going to find a time that works for them based on my calendar. We're going to dive a little deeper. So this email is actually a canned email. For anyone who uses a Google Mail, you have the opportunity to have canned emails. So if you notice, I have it in green. There's going to be some color coding as we go through this presentation. Green means I have to do something. But all I have to do is take this email, click canned response, and boom, done. Hit send. Okay. With that, this has already been inserted, sent off to the client. What else happens? Well, here's a link to my project request form. This is a Gravity form on my website. And when they submit the form, I use ActiveCampaign, use whatever mail system you want. But I tag them. And you'll see I tag them as I go along the way in the automation, because it gives me a pulse on where they're at. It says project request submitted. Good to know. So then once you're completed, you'll be taken to my scheduling page. What am I using for that? Well, I use BookMe. Um, I got it on a great AppSumo deal. Um, Acuity works well, too. That links in, it basically gives the opportunity for me to have appointments that are of the period of time I'd be willing to do for a sales call, i.e. about 20 minutes. It's tied into my Google Calendar. When they sign up, it gets tied into their Google Calendar. It's automatically put on my Google Calendar. Reminders go out a day before, an hour before. They're told that the meeting's going to happen in a Zoom room, and here's a link. And I tag them in active campaign that the sales call was scheduled. So these things, if you notice, I've gone from just popping in a canned response to potentially they've gone and found themselves, they've answered my questions, and only once they answer do they get to go see my calendar. They've now found the time that works on their, the, my calendar, they've scheduled it, and it's on the books. Now there's a lot of other little things I do in here because automation can be refined and expanded upon over time. So I've got the tag of project request submitted. And I also know there's this tag of sales call scheduled. So what happens if they fill out the form, it brings them to the calendar, and they don't sign up? Well, I can know this in my system based on these tags and potentially three days later say, send a follow-up saying, hey, thanks for submitting the project request inquiry. I'd love to get you on my calendar so we can talk about it. Here's the link. 
right? But if they did sign up right off the bat, I also know from the sales call schedule tag not to harass them with that email. So by putting in those little droplets of where we are in the process along the way, you can further refine your automation. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's something that with time you can get more and more polished. And so I have gone from an auto canned response to them on my calendar. I can also take a peek when I see a booking come through at what they submitted, because that comes to my inbox, and just scan it and quickly decide if I'm going to be like, great, or I'm going to sort of send out, wow, we're not accepting clients anymore. Here's a referral. Please go somewhere else, right? So just because they got themselves on my calendar doesn't mean they get to stay. So they're on the calendar. We're going to have the sales call, unless you have a sales team. Can't automate that. Write the proposal. Um, there are some ways to help that out, and I speak about that in the longer version of this presentation. But ultimately, we're going to sign the client. Now we've got to get them into our system. And what I'm going to show you next is the seed for this entire talk. So we want to get them in our system. And again, the goal here is to bring them in to our onboarding system, put them in all of our tools with minimal effort. And the solution is Gravity Forms. If you haven't noticed, I kind of love Gravity Forms. I should probably own stock in the company. And Zapier. Boom. So what I quickly figured out was when you bring someone on board, you're going to potentially put them in systems like Slack for internal conversation, Dropbox maybe for a folder, put them in your to-do tr software, your time tracking, your invoicing. And all of these systems require the same thing the name of the client, the email of the client, the name of the project, you know, just very basic stuff. And you're sitting here setting this up every time. This is ultimate cloning. I have gone from one form on my website, I've used Zapier, and I do literally pretty much do a happy dance every time I execute this because I'm so darn proud of it. Because it's like, wah, magic, done. Done correctly, consistently, every single time. It is beautiful. I also want to, while I'm talking about cloning, because really at the heart of cloning, we're, or we're talking about in automation, we're talking about an efficiency mindset here. So just some additional like pro tips is always try to use the same tool suite. As you're building out, you know, you have your go-to theme and plugin, right? It doesn't, every project doesn't need to be a new theme you found on ThemeForest you need to learn. Have the ones you love that you know inside and out. It will save you time. It will make you more efficient. Also create a seed development area. I have one or two sites with my go-tos, with all the plugins kept up to date, all turned off, my go-to themes, and I just clone it in. Boom, you're set up and ready to go. You turn on what you need as you need them. When you launch, the ones you don't need, you delete. Done. Only you know, use hosts that you know and love. Who here has had the joy of working with some random host in an environment where you're like, where the hell's the cPanel and what is going on? Yeah. Efficiency? No. There's either going to be, it's going to, you got some options here. One, they can use what you want. Two, they cannot be your client. Or three, there is going to be some major pain and suffering fee that they are paying. And you, it's still, it might not be worth it. And then really just continue to think about how you can automate. I'm going to, at the very end, providing how you have time, I'll kind of talk a little bit about how you can automate through your process. But as you catch yourself doing things that are Basically anything, if you can outline a how-to, you can automate it, and that means either a tool or somebody else, not you, can be doing it. Another thing is decluttering your inbox in efficiency. So filters are your best friend. Just instead of going through all this stuff, you know, just have really easy stuff, but just funnel all your clients into their own folder. And um, one way to clean out your inbox is to use something like a ticketing system but I have found over the years that sometimes how I implement things change. So I actually, again, like to use Gravity Forms where I can then send it onto my ticketing system of choice. That way, if my ticketing system changes, the experience to the user is always the same. And there's this wonderful little field I've added called task urgency where it's like, okay, so how important is this? Oh, it's a normal task. Okay, we'll have it done in a couple days. Oh, it's sort of important. All right, fine. Oh, the sky is falling. There's going to be a fee for that. Do you know how often the sky isn't falling anymore? Suddenly things are just like not that critical. <laughs> Who knew? 
Um, I spoke with someone last night, uh, the, the speakers were talking, and I think he did like a 1x, a 1.5x, and a 2x with his kind of pricing structures. Like, again, so like how important is this to your business? Because, right? Just little, little tips. So we're going to finish the project, we're going to do the work, we're going to wow the client, and now let's get some more business, shall we? Even after the project's over, we can use automation to continue to support your business. And the beauty with automation is you set it up once and you thank yourself every time it runs. And so like a month out, simple, testimonial time. Everything's fresh, some sort of auto, and so when the project ends, you just mark it off as site launched. Great, one month later, we loved working with you. We'd love a testimonial. Here's a direct link to my Google you know, review page. Give me five stars and tell me how much you love me. Uh, at month two, keeping things humming email. So I'm sure you've been logging into your site, right, client? And you've noticed you know, as they log in, there's probably like 20 things that need to be updated by now. You should probably update those. Or we do offer this maintenance service you might be interested in. And of course, this is again where we use tags. If they're already on your maintenance and care plan, don't bother them with this email, right? Month three, how about we ask for some referrals? How many of us actually ask? You know, if you don't mind, we love working with you and we'd love to work with others like you. We also love to thank our referrals. Keep me in mind, six months later, a year later, a couple like, hey, it's been six months. Can you believe it? We hit a year. Happy birthday. And at nine months, something useful. But the point is, is you can set up a very simple way of automating touch points with your client, even a year out of launching the site, where you are still top of mind, where you still are their go-to, where you still are the one who they'll think of for a referral, by being helpful, by just dropping in their life every once in a while. And again, you set this up once, it's set up. It runs every single time. So this is all great. Where the hell do I begin, right? Well, let's start with, we'll begin with one step at a time. The easiest way is whenever you catch yourself doing tasks, just, you know, especially the repetitive ones, just think, can I standardize this? Can I streamline this? When you catch yourself writing emails, save them. Cut and paste is still less work than rewriting the wheel every single time. How many of you have done that? I know I have. Yeah, exactly. And I know I shouldn't be doing it, and yet there I am doing it. And I... Um, love to, so I hate doing documentation, but I know how important it is. Where I do well is in just video recording, so I use Loom. So for example, how do we set up a development site? Simple. I put on the screen record, I put on my headphones, I talk through it, I record it doing it, and then I give it to my VA to spend the five hours turning it into a screenshot, documented, whatever. Right? Well, but that's, I'm getting a laugh, but it's true and it's okay because two things happen when I do that. Or maybe three. One, I don't have to spend the five hours. Two, that person is learning how I want things done. And three, I have my very first system and process documented in my business. I'll be damned, I'm a professional here. Okay? And then if you really want to start thinking about automation from a really high-level perspective, this is where I start for the, you know, those of you who have heard me talking about setting up an agency and stuff, this is where I get more into these things. This is where we start to think about things from that top level. Um, some books that are great, Built to Sell was really influential for me. Uh, Work the System is actually free. I think they just make you share stuff on social media once. Um, and Traction, I haven't read, but I've heard great things about. I think I, find, I must have been at the you know, burnout phase. I just couldn't read one more book on the topic. But the whole point of this is when you want to really go in and start automating stuff, which is what I've done in my business, is I looked at my business from an iterative level of breaking things down. Because when we think about documenting and doing systems and processes, it can feel overwhelming. We have so much in our head. So much happens from start to finish when we're building a project. But we can just approach this in an easier way. We can say, okay, it's a high level, what's going on? Well, we have sales, then onboarding, discovery, then design, development, then launch, post-launch, and offboarding. Okay. And then we iterate. 
All right, onboarding. Let's look at onboarding. Well, when I onboard a client, I usually send a welcome email and schedule a kickoff call, and then I add them to all my internal tools. Okay, my welcome email. Well, my welcome email, you know, I use a mailing list, and I have triggers that cause it to go out, and I have a follow-up series that go along with it, and when they actually do stuff, I do other things. So what I would encourage you is if you want to start doing systems and processes in your, your business, one of the ways that I found most effective was instead of getting overwhelmed with all of the scope or deep diving in one step, where I just got like so clear here, but I really didn't have the um, capturing of my entire business, was to do things in kind of going in a sort of recursive pattern of like, you know, what's the top level? Okay, let's go through it again and go to the next level of depth. What are those levels? Let's do it again. And so I was documenting my entire business, getting incrementally deeper, as opposed to just going so deep in one and being like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. So I just share that. I mean, automation's a bit like teaching your kids to tie their own shoes, right? It does take additional work up front, but here's the thing. Are you planning to go to college with your kids just to tie their shoes? Or do you not, once you've taken the time to teach them how to tie their shoes, celebrate every single time? They just do it. And automation is the same, right? It's one of those things where you're going to have to put in some upfront work, but you are going to thank yourself each and every time it runs. And then I just added two slides. Um, this presentation, actually, it's long form. So if you liked what I shared today, I'm going to go a little deeper into some more examples next weekend, actually, up in Seattle, where I'll be speaking for a full uh, 30 or 40 minute time slot. But, um, and that's the presentation that's at Mozak Design slash WordCamp. Um, but these are some of the tools of the trade. I often get asked, what are the tools I'm using in my business for each of these things? And do know that they'll change um, and do change with time. But in this moment of time, these are the tools I'm using. And you can see I have a love at the moment. is Zapier, the magical online application connector. Uh, for those that don't know what it is, it is basically this online tool that an action in triggers actions out. So simply completing a form, I can then say when a form is submitted, do this, this, and this. So it's kind of one of those like hubs that connect a bunch of online software. And then additional things, uh, Manage WP is what I use for my kind of site management and cloning. Um, Google, of course, Gravity Forms. And then uh, Profitable Project Plan by Jennifer Bourne has been a great one for if you want someone who's already helped produce a lot of things that give you the automation and the, um, the steps of a development process, she's great for that. And even through WP Elevation with Troy Dean, I also got um, some of this mindset. So I just want to give credit where credit is due for people who have influenced my life that have brought me along the way to have some of these thoughts. So I'm guessing I'm getting kicked off stage. <laughs> but that's me and thanks for listening. <laughs>